Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the first video in Module 7. In this video you will be introduced to Return on Investment for Workplace Learning. We will begin with the analysis questions and then take a look at understanding ROI through the evaluation plan. Next I'll introduce you to a model of calculating ROI and then we'll examine some of the critical indicators for successful ROI management. We will then wrap up the video with a couple of synthesis questions. There is one analysis question I'd like you to use to help you focus while going through the readings and the video. ROI comes in many forms, not just monetary. For example, think of a time when you need to have your car repaired. Do you feel that you had a fair or good return on investment? How do you know you had a good ROI? Let's begin with a model that you're likely familiar with, the ADDI Framework of Instruction. ADDI is an acronym that stands for Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. Return on investment is one part of the evaluation process, and business owners may argue that it's the most important aspect of the framework. It's paramount that training departments measure the cost of employee training. Is the training worth it for the organization and the employees? Many businesses grapple with employee training because they are unsure how training will have a positive effect on the business. How do you measure the cost of sending your employees for training? Is such training worth it for the organization and the employees? These are questions that many companies face. There are five steps involved in understanding training ROI. First, the company must have a definitive evaluation plan. The plan should have baseline data from which the effectiveness of the training can be measured. Data are then collected during training. This goes beyond a pass-fail assessment. End of training assessment often include the learner's satisfaction with the training, reaction to the learning experience, the learning materials, and sometimes the trainer's facilitation skills and topic knowledge. Next, these data are analyzed. Data are converted into monetary value. A report is then generated. This is called an impact report. So where does ROI fit into the plan? It is actually part of the data analysis process. Obviously, this slide is a simplified explanation of a time-consuming process. To help you understand how ROI is situated in training programs, we need to take a closer look at these five steps. The evaluation plan is created to review the objectives of the training and state how the training will solve the problem identified in the needs assessment. Next, the evaluation plan must clearly state how the training will be evaluated. What tools will be used for evaluation? When and how many times will evaluation take place? What are acceptable knowledge retention rates and over what amount of time? Evaluation tools include timing how long it takes to perform a specific task or perhaps a quiz after training and again two months later after training. Having multiple evaluations over time allows for more accurate information about the success of the training. There are many types of evaluation that I'm sure you as a learner and employee have encountered. Critical to the evaluation plan is having benchmark data. Ideally, data are gathered from employees several times prior to training. This allows for averaging the data. After training, these data are compared to the data gathered from the evaluation tools. It's vital that the same evaluation tool be used for the baseline data and after the training is completed. Data collection may take place during the training. This doesn't always occur, but it is helpful for the learner and the trainers to see if progress is being made. Learners can think of this as a formative assessment. Data should always be collected after the training is complete and may include a summative assessment. Aside from using the evaluation tools, feedback forms are often used to discover how the employees felt about the training, if it met their needs, and how successful they felt the training was. 
Results of the data analysis allow employers to ascertain if the training program successfully transferred new knowledge and skills to employees. The data may be used to create new or supportive training, identify gaps in training, and understand if the training met the objectives of the program. The data that are analyzed are more than just evaluation tools. Also included is the return on investment of the program. ROI calculations must include all costs accrued by the training program, including the time and resources needed to complete the plan. All tangible and intangible costs must be listed and a monetary value assigned to each cost. For example, one of the goals of training may be to increase employee morale. How much is that worth to the business? Don't discount intangibles. Researchers have found that high morale at work often equals higher productivity and less time away from work. An accurate list of costs is important. Otherwise, an accurate ROI cannot be calculated. There are several different calculations used to measure ROI. The first is the benefit cost ratio. This calculation is the program benefit divided by the cost. The second is the payback period. This is the total investment divided by the annual savings. Now I know that numbers can intimidate some people, but calculating ROI is fairly easy calculation to understand. The problem some people have is they don't include all the expenses in the equation. It's important to make a comprehensive list of expenses. If your company is creating the training, then include the wages of everyone involved in creating and facilitating training and materials purchased for the project. If your company is sending employees for training, then you must calculate the time away from work of employees who need to be trained. Of course, managers also need to include if the training is successful and if the training solved the problem. This is the basic ROI calculation. This calculation is used to identify if there was a profit or loss to a program. With this calculation, a profit is indicated if the answer is greater than 100%. If it's lower than 100%, then it was a loss. If it was exactly 100, then the program broke even. The ROI analysis is embedded in the evaluation plan and is often seen as a five-step process. The first step is reaction, satisfaction, and planned action. This measures the satisfaction of program participants and if they intend to apply what they have learned. Sometimes this is done through a simple end-of-session survey. Now there's two problems with this evaluation. Intention does not always lead to action or follow-through. And a favorable reaction does not measure successful learning of a new skill or knowledge acquisition. The second step is called learning. This focuses on what and how well participants learnt the material. A number of assessment tools may be used, but the problem is the reverse of step one. Passing the test does not guarantee that the new skill or knowledge will be applied in the workplace. Step three is application and implementation, which recommends several types of follow-up methods to determine whether participants applied what they learned once they return to work. The problem with this step is it does not ensure that there will be a positive business impact as a result of the training. Step four addresses this issue with business impact. This focuses on the actual business results achieved by training participants as they apply what they have learned in their workplace. This measures output, quality, cost, and time. The final step is return on investment. This is the ultimate level of evaluation. It compares the monetary benefits with the program costs. Although ROI can be expressed in several ways, it is usually presented as a percentage or cost-benefit ratio. According to Barnett and Maddox, there are five critical indicators of successful ROI management. The first is to develop a measurable strategy that aligns with the business. Next, apply a measurement framework that fits the strategy. The third indicator is aligning the correct resources. Then, select the correct measures for the organization. 
And finally, ensure the organization is culturally prepared for change. The final product of the plan is the impact report. An impact report is created to communicate and archive the training results. The report is used to validate the training intervention, provide information about additional training interventions, and evaluate the training model used. Now we've looked at plans, analysis, and indicators that help organizations measure training ROI, and all of these are quite complicated. So let's take a high-level look at how they're related. First, there is the evaluation process. The ROI is calculated after all data are analyzed. There are five critical indicators for successful ROI, ending with the equation. Finally, there are five indicators of successful ROI. As you can see by drilling down, ROI is not merely a calculation. It required planning, clear processes, evaluation tools, and measurable objectives. There are two synthesis questions for this video. Well, actually, they're activities. Come prepared to the tutorial with a list of reasons that ROI is valuable for individuals and organizations. Next, I want you to think about a T&D project. Create a list of possible expenses. This list will be useful to you in your PBL and your final assignment. Be prepared to share your work on Adobe Connect so we can all discuss it. Determining ROI is critical for all T&D programs. Following the steps outlined in the video are just the beginning. In the next video, we'll look at the pros and cons associated with ROI. See you then.